So welcome everybody. I am Virginia and I will be presenting my thesis project on estimation of point processes and direct gas. This is the schema that we will be following. First, we will start with an introduction followed by some theoretical concepts and then I will describe the data as well as uh, some uh, processing done. And then some uh, approaches about the segmentation and the map matching uh, were presented uh, together with the Poisson relation model. So safe, safety on the roads is a very important uh, concern since it's the cause of uh, around 1.3 million deaths each year worldwide. Also, according to the European road uh, document, uh, transport uh, accidents, especially road crashes, are one of the major causes of death in Europe. Um, they've managed to, to reduce the number of deaths on the road uh, a lot during the last years, but uh, now vehicles are safe enough, and they have seen that human error is now the cause of most of the accidents. And measuring and analyzing can help a lot to reduce the number of fatalities. So learning from previous accidents can be very useful to warn about uh, the dangerous road and which circumstances uh, make the roads be more dangerous. The main purpose of the thesis is to process and transform the provided data, which consists on accident data. Uh, for its further analysis, uh, the, later we will map the accidents uh, in the different uh, country municipalities to analyze which ones are the most safe and dangerous. And then we will also construct a map, a graph, sorry, representing the road net network of the country. And we will map the accidents on it. Uh, also, the, the idea is to demonstrate that all this previous uh, work can be used for a model of Poisson regression with the object, objective of uh, inferring the number of accidents as a function of different factors. Now we will start with some theoretical concepts. A uh, point process is uh, some method of uh, randomly, randomly allocating points to intervals in the real uh, lane or in the real line or in the plane. And um, for a point process to be a Poisson point process, it uh, has to uh, have these two properties, but uh, first, a Poisson point process is some uh, stochastic process that describes the number of uh, times a certain random event occurs. For example, accidents on the road are modeled as uh, Poisson point processes. The two properties that uh, uh, Poisson point processes have are uh, that they are distributed according to the Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda. Uh, that characterize it. Uh, lambda is the average number of occurrences and is also a measure of the intensity of the, of the random variable x. Also, the complete independence, which means that the number of occurrences in one subregion is independent of the other ones. Then, to perform a Poisson regression model, we use uh, long linear models. These uh, models arise in situations in which the count of occurrences is the primary unit of observation. The idea is uh, to model and uh, yeah, to model and predict lambda as a function of these different factors, as we can see here in this uh, equation. Then we will use Magina and then. Um, it's, uh, it consists of a geospatial library that is used for processing and doing analytics on big data using the Apache Spark framework. What, uh, what is uh, geospatial analytics? It's uh, any type of analytics that uses both spatial structure and context for processing. Then given a point or a shape, Using Magilla, we can, uh, we can attach metadata to it, which is basically information about what's surrounding the point. And uh, in this research, we, we will be using Magilla, for example, given some latitude and longitude points. We'll, using Magilla, we will identify to which uh, city or municipality 
a, a play in Verona School. Now, uh, Open Street Maps is, uh, is also something that we are using here, and it's a free editable map of the whole world. It represents uh, physical pictures on the ground, like buildings, roads, uh, paths, uh, by using tabs attached to its uh, basic attributes. The basic attributes of open street maps are nodes, ways, and relations. And we focused on nodes and ways. Then uh, nodes are basically uh, points, and uh, ways, uh, yeah, there are points that are identified with the node ID that it is allowed and ways are basically ordered list of nodes. Then we have uh, the concept of graphs. They are they are structures uh, formed by vertices and edges, uh, and the edges represent the connection between the, the uh, vertices. And uh, it's uh, kind of logical to think uh, how the uh, notions of nodes and ways from open street map maps very nicely with the idea of vertices and edges uh, from graphs. And then we will be using directed graphs, which are um, graphs uh, whose edges uh, have directions. And then graphs represent a very useful way of describing relationships in many different scenarios. And using, using them through Spark, we're using the graphics and the graphing packages, allows us to work on graph analytics. Now we uh, will talk about the data, but first we will talk a bit about the framework. The data is uh, composed of us, and uh, it is, this is the European framework for road accident data collection, and it's called CADAS. And this is a minimum set of standardized data requirements. CADA establishes the, the rules that each country from the European Union needs to follow when they are collecting accident data. And this methodology is formed from uh, more than 100 rules. This way, by introducing this standardization, the harmonization between uh, accident data at the national and European level is achieved. And as a consequence, uh, the possibility of comparing accident data between different uh, European uh, countries will be possible. The, Data, the, 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 the structure of the data that CADAS uh, proposes is the following one. It's divided into four uh, main categories one for the accident, road, traffic union, and person. And each of them uh, contain uh, attributes about the, uh, the different uh, uh, categories. Then the, the provided data that uh, we use in this. Uh, project is provided by a company and it consists on a relational database containing accident data uh, on, on the roads uh, in Lithuania. Uh, we had the data available for four different years from 2017 to 2020. The data was uh, presented in different CSV files, one for each table and one, uh, one for each year. This way, for one year of data, we will have four different CSV files, one for each category. In total, we had uh, around 12,000 uh, accident records. The data structure that the, the available data had is the same that CADAS proposed. It's divided into the four main categories. And uh, as we can see here, each category has a different number of attributes. In total, we had uh, 65 attributes, and each attribute, each attribute must follow a specific CADAS rules and different. So for each of them, we had to do a special analysis. Before going to the data processing, we will talk about the environment that we will be using uh, through the whole project. Uh, we've been implementing the, the code, the majority of the code in Scala within the Apache Spark ecosystem. Uh, for some tasks, we use a local system, but for the majority of them, we were using Databricks. 
And for doing some visualizations, we use, we use Faldo. As I mentioned before, the, that the data needs to be, needs to follow the, the CADAS requirements. So it needs to be ingested and validated according to them. Uh, and in this way, it will satisfy the conditions about the values and format that they suggest. To do this, we created a data frame grader. It first read uh, the multiple CSV files of the different of the different structures. Uh, so it will read uh, the CSV file of the same structure at once for the different years. Then we will pass is uh, each row to the corresponding parser because we created four different parser, one for each of the categories. And inside the parser, uh, first uh, it split the incoming row into tokens. Then it tests each uh, token's requirements, which means that it will check the attributes format, the length, and values. And at the same time, it will store an error message if the requirement is uh, not satisfied. Um, as a, then, after doing all of this, the data frame reader will, returns, uh, will return a data frame of uh, each of the categories consisting of on the union of all the records. Here we have an example of the, of the validation of one of the attributes, in this case, the corresponding to the accident ID. This is the shared attribute among the four tables. So this is a number that allows the accident to be uh, both identified and uh, cross-referenced between the different categories. The schema that this attribute has is the following one. It's divided into, into three parts. The first one corresponds to the initial of the country, the second one to the year, and the last one to the identification number. So the, the validation that we had to do in this case first consisted on checking that the length of the attribute is equal to 12. Then we check that the first two characters correspond to LT, the next four uh, characters uh, were inside the, 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 the values from the years that we were analyzing, and the last six uh, characters needed to be different from zero. And as I mentioned before, we did this for all the 65 uh, attributes. While doing this process, we created a new column in the data frame for storing the errors uh, found for the non-valid non attributes. Uh, in the majority of the cases, this uh, column contained no values because in that case, the requirements uh, were met. But in the case that any of the attributes didn't satisfy the requirement, a concatenation of the error message was stored in this, in this error column. To identify which record had any error, it was just it was very simple just by filtering out the non-null values from the errors column. We have uh, also two special cases for the attributes, which are the latitude and longitude. They were originally expressed in the Lithuanian National Coordinate System. This is allowed, according to CADAS, uh, to have uh, the coordinates in the national system, but they also uh, suggest that it's a good practice to transform the coordinates into a more universal system, like the World Geodetic System. And we, do, we did this transformation uh, using the RGIS library from S3. Once the, all the data has been ingested and validated, we can read it into two different formats, depending on the processing that we can do later, into parquet or into delta lakes. Then we start, uh, it, we can say that this is uh, one of the most time consuming steps in this uh, thesis because of the high number of rules that the data needed to conform to. But uh, ingesting one validation in this case are fundamental steps and uh, they are very useful and can be very useful in the future 
for analyzing for analyzing the data from other countries. Now we um, did the two different approaches to segment the country. One of them is segmented segmented by municipalities using Magilla. So first we found that the data set representing the different uh, municipalities in Lithuania, and we read it using Magilla. Uh, we found that uh, we had 16 municipalities. Then we load the accident data. We join these two uh, data sets together to find out which uh, point, which accidents point uh, belongs to each of the municipalities. The resulting data frame consists of uh, the accident point together with its corresponding municipality. Then it's very easy to count the number of accidents in each of them and do some uh, calculation, calculations like the relative frequency of accidents or the number of accidents uh, normalized by population. Here we can see in this table the top five uh, municipalities with the highest number of accidents. And uh, the first one corresponds to Vilnius as the one with the highest number of accidents and it's also the capital of the, the country. Here, in order to visualize better the previous results, we plotted it in a map uh, where the relative frequency of accidents uh, were scaled um, with colors. And uh, we can see what we mentioned before that the most uh, the municipalities with the highest number of accidents corresponded to the most populated areas with the main uh, areas in between. And here we have another different analysis. In this case, we uh, normalize the accidents by population, and we also represent it by colors. And uh, discussing these results, we can say that the municipalities with the highest number of points corresponds to the most populated areas in Lithuania, but they are not the same as the ones with the higher likelihood of a person to having an accident, because that was uh, what the previous image, previous figure was uh, showing. Now we have the second approach to segment the country. In this case, it's by way segments. The idea here is to create a graphics graph from OpenStreetMap data. And then we will segment the graph by a distance threshold, and this graph will represent in the Lithuanian road network. The first step is to ingest the OpenStreetMap data, and to do this, we use a method called OpenStreetMap Marketizer. It uh, transforms the PDF file downloaded from OpenStreetMap into parquet files, and uh, after doing this transformation, it, it returns uh, three different uh, parquet files for each of the structures of uh, OpenStreetMap, nodes, ways, and relations. The second step is to create the topology graph, which is which we call G0. And this graph, uh, first we identify the intersections, uh, which uh, the criteria followed was that an intersection is a uh, node that appears in more than two ways. And these are the vertices of the graph, and then we created the edges between them. Then we added the distance between vertices information to this graph, and uh, we segmented, uh, segmented G0 by a distance threshold, and we created a new graph called G1. In this case, the edges were uh, split according to this uh, distant threshold, and uh, new nodes uh, and the info were turned into new vertices, and then we created also new edges. Here we can see a summary of uh, the process of segmentation, and we can see how G0 and G0 plus the distances have the same structure with the intersections of as vertices. So the number of the vertices didn't change. And then when we split it, uh, G1 uh, have, uh, has a very high number of vertices and edges. 
name and other step was done. We run the connected components algorithm in G0 in order to get the largest connected component. We had that number of vertices. And then uh, we run the page run algorithm, which uh, uh, assign uh, a score to each of the vertices of the graph. Can, um, I, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So the this is 138,552. Can you go back to the previous slide? Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, oh, okay, I see. Sorry, I was, I, yeah. So, so G0 is the topology graph. Yeah, for the okay, so the connected component is actually almost a lot. Yeah. And then when you did G1, did you use what, 100 meters? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, cool. All right, thanks. So we applied the page run to the largest component, and it gave uh, an score to the different vertices of the graph, which are the intersections. So it gave us a measure uh, and, and a score for each of the intersections that we will be using later for the Poisson relation. Then we want to map the accidents on the graph. And for that, we will be using a map matching which is uh, a step needed for um, assign ge uh, geographic coordinates to the, to the road map, map data. We use the GeoMatch, which is um, an algorithm, a very efficient and scalable map matching algorithm that uh, match a GPS point to the nearest uh, road segments. And the output of GeoMatch is uh, the original point together with the list of its uh, k closest segments. But in this case, we use uh, GeoMast to map each accident with its closest intersections. So we set k to 1. Now, this is the step of the Poisson linear regression. Um, we wanted to estimate which uh, conditions of uh, both the accidents and the road. Uh, the road to the network graph influence the most on the number of uh, accidents. The condition was analyzed where the accident was in an urban area or not, and the um, conditions regarding the road surface were light, together with the distance from the accidents to its closest intersections and the um, patron score of these intersections. In order to perform the Poisson intervention, we group the accidents by similar conditions and counted them. And uh, Poisson regression needed to, needs to have continuous data, but some of these uh, conditions are categorical, so they first need to be transformed. The input of the regression consists of a vector with the combination of the variables. And we use the generalized linear regression from a spark to perform the regression, setting the family to Poisson and the leak function to dog. The output of the regression consisted of a list of variables with their coefficients. The coefficient, the coefficient of the features means that if we have a high, a high coefficient, it will have a high impact on the counts and the other way around. We grouped the data differently with individual and multiple analysis, and they all gave the same behavior for each of the variables. In this case, we are showing the Poisson regression by grouping the accidents by month. And this is the results obtained. As we can see, the daylight, dry surface accident in an urban area and clear weather are the ones that affect positively to the number of accidents and the equation that models the parameter lambda is the one that we see here. And what, what we can say here is, as I mentioned, that these are the uh, circumstances, facts, or that affects the most to the number of accidents. And this result goes against what was expected because one should expect that uh, bad weather conditions are the ones that affect the most the number of accidents. Uh, but we can say that it is not possible to determine the relative rate of accidents 
under different conditions without having the frequency of uh, vehicles both uh, having accidents or without having accidents. And the just justification of the results can be that maybe more people drive in normal conditions and also that the quality of the data could be bad since maybe policemen just collect, collect the data with the default values instead of uh, checking the weather conditions at the moment of the accident. I think Lithuania is a favorite tourist destination for a lot of people because it's good cheap food, I think. <laughs> Maybe use the data with the Ministry of Tourism things. <laughs> then we run two different uh, uh, Poisson regression, one only with the Patreon score, and we obtain a negative uh, value, and another one using the Patreon together with the distance, and the results uh, were consistent. Uh, so yeah, as we can see, both uh, in both analysis, the Patreon coefficient is. Uh, is uh, negative and quite uh, high. So we can say from here that the distance to the closest intersections does, does not affect much to the accident because in, in both analysis it uh, was close to zero. And the Patreon score does, but it influences negatively on them, meaning that a high Patreon score will reduce the number of accidents according to our results. Mm, why this is happening? Maybe because the Patreon algorithm does not differentiate between intersection in main uh, in main roads or secondary roads, just uh, give the score based on the connections that the intersections have. And also maybe because uh, when we are in our intersections, the speed limit is reduced and we are having less uh, probability of having an accident because of the uh, high speed. We are sure that accessing to more data could have been, could have made easier to group the data in different scenarios and doing more analysis. To conclude, we will say that uh, with uh, ingested and validated the, the provided data according to CADAS and uh, the segmentation done by municipalities uh, returns uh, the municipalities with the highest number of accidents, as well as the segmentation by road segments. And we extract information from the graph to be used later for the Poisson regression model. So we demonstrate that this uh, result could be uh, used for Poisson regression. And we try to justify the count of, of accidents by the different factors. And we found these are the, the factors that affected the most. Uh, we created a pipeline that is efficient and highly scalable to large uh, data sets because of the fact that we are using Spark. And it also allows for ingesting data from all the European countries and uh, accessing to this data will improve, improve the quality of our results and allow for more uh, complex analysis. That's so 